Uh, Dan, uh, Dane, Dan, <laughs> sorry, sorry, Dan. Sorry. <laughs> Dan. Dane began surveying in 2005, and on day one, he knew he was a surveyor at heart. He loved the ability to be outside, perform historical research, perform mathematical computations, meet with landowners, cut line, investigate, and assist with legal matters, and learn new equipment and technology. Still, still the same 17 years later. I love it. Dane received his land surveying uh, training LSIT in 2007, subsequently became a licensed land surveyor in the state of Maine in 2009. Dane is currently licensed in not only the state of Maine, but also Vermont, Texas, Oregon, and Colorado. In all, he has gained over 15 years of experience working in not only in many different states, but also different survey disciplines, including residential, commercial, altas, energy sectors, transportation, and construction. And now Dane currently works as a professional land surveyor for Colorado Department of Transportation. And then of course, uh, if those of you have been following Dane, he's uh, created a survey manual as well. Um, those of you that want just a whole lot more, uh, there's what, 16, 18 hours of uh, uh, video content on the uh, WestFed website, which I'll throw out uh, again uh, as part of the refresher on this email. So. Um, this is Dane's passion is teaching and, and uh, kind of helping those uh, pass the exams. And so I appreciate uh, Dane coming on as he does uh, kind of that first Monday of every month. And uh, all of his content is based around uh, kind of the FSPS and uh, CST exam stuff. So we appreciate your time, Dane. I love it. Thanks for coming back yeah. again. Yeah, thank you. Um, all right. So everyone should see my blue screen here public land survey system is that correct yep you're good on your powerpoint yep um and then what about um my video uh, i don't see my video anymore um, i yeah i have it uh on your cell phone and maybe if you just slide your cell phone to the right just a hair it'll kind of line up over the center of it oh, okay yeah there you go yeah, I, yeah i'll unplug it whenever um well here we yeah. go yeah yeah there's that and then i uh i pin those when you I pinned that particular video up. Uh, oh, actually, somebody taught me how to pin them both. I got to go do that. Oh, okay. Uh, cool. Pin. All right. Cool. All right. Well, um, yeah, I'll, I'll make this pretty brief, about an hour or so. But um, if at any point during this someone has questions or um, wants to correct me on something or speak out, please just interrupt me. Um, that's what makes it a good uh, lesson when it becomes a conversation. So you guys, um, y'all feel free to speak up. Um, let me see, I, I gave this presentation at the West Fed uh, conference here last uh, March and April. It went pretty well. I didn't have, I, I'm always worried about public lands um, when I talk about it because Everyone's got their own opinions. Everyone interprets the manual differently. Different states do things different than other states. And um, so I try to keep this to the basics. Now, what the purpose of this lesson is, is to um, give you the overall big picture of public lands as it pertains to the fundamentals of survey exam, the, the FS exam. Um, when you take your PS exam after you pass your FS exam, the principles of survey, that's when you get really involved in this. Um, and I, I pretty much tell everyone they need to take two books. It, I, I'm not sure if it's open book or not, but um, to study for the PS exam, all you really need is the Bureau of Land Management Manual, which is a free download. And you need... Um, some sort of legal, um, I, I like I like this book right here, um, Boundary and Control Legal Principles by Brown. Um, this book right here, I mean, it, it breaks down legal descriptions and everything you could possibly imagine. Here are all my notes. It's kind of like my little cheat sheet, um, which essentially is the manual that I wrote. Um, I, I, I will say that, but... Um, this Brown's Boundary Control and Legal Principles, this is um, golden. You know, this is going to have everything you need as far as legal principles are concerned for the PS exam. 
along with the Bureau of Land Management um, manual. And again, that's just a free download. I think it's like 634 pages or something like that. Um, but you can get that for free. It's a government document that is available to the public. Um, so don't go buying that. You can just download it and uh, pay your boss, you know, five dollars of paper. Um, and then you can mark it up, do whatever the hell you want with it, you know. So, um, again, we're going to go over public lands, um, the PLSS system. And, um, uh, again, overall big picture. Um, and this is going to give you the information you need to pass the FS exam questions related to this topic. Okay. Um, so let's get into it. Um, so there's two types. Oh, um, and one more thing. If you're living on the East Coast, you know, if you're in the original 13 colonies, this is not something you're very familiar with. You know, I my first five years of surveying, I heard about this thing called public lands, and I never really got to utilize it. Um, I had to study up on it to pass my FS exam, but after that, um, I never had to look at it again um, the entire time I was living up in Maine and got my license there. It wasn't until I moved to um, Colorado that it really came into play. You know, I, I moved from Maine to Texas, which is not public lands either. So again, like my, my first five years of surveying was, um, I'm sorry, my first 10 years of surveying really wasn't dealing with public lands because of those, those two areas are both meets and bounds areas. So let's get into what I mean by that. Um, the original 13 colonies, uh, they were being settled by all these people from all over the world. You know, you had Dutch, you had uh, Pennsylvania was inundated with Germans. You had Massachusetts, which was British. Um, you had Spain, you had uh, uh, Scotland, um, France. You had all these different nations that were coming and settling the new land. Um, and when they did that, they, they got here and they, they tended to stick together. You know, you had, you had these colonies made with um, all the Frenchmen. And then 100 miles up shore, you had a bunch of Germans. Um, and then above them were Dutch, you know, so everyone kind of stuck together. Um, but in doing that, they also started dividing up all this land um, that they were starting to colonize. And they were using methods that they knew from their motherland. Um, there was no such thing as public lands back then. There was no such thing as America back then. OK, so you had all these people coming in using all their different methods of measuring, different um, units of measurement, uh, different land surveying techniques that were being performed back in their mother country. Um, then as time goes on, uh, we start to fight the British, we become America, you know, after the Revolutionary War. Well, now we are a brand new country and we're, we're at this point, a big hodgepodge of all these ways of surveying um, for the last 150, 200 years. So now the U.S. government, the new U.S. government is stuck with trying to figure out how are we going to organize a method of survey that is, uh, um, that is useful and efficient in America. So they came up with this system called the Public Land Survey System. And they, it was a huge rush to do this at the time because they had all these soldiers fighting in the American Revolution and America had no money to pay them. We were very land rich and money poor. We had more land than we knew what to do with, but we had no money. So the way we paid these soldiers was with land, but we couldn't even give them the land if we didn't know what we were going to inventory um, and how we were going to inventory it. So that's the whole, that was the whole push 
Um, so when you think of public land survey system, it, you really should not be thinking it was a system of high tech measuring. It was a system to inventory. It's more of an accounting exercise than it was a land surveying exercise. The US government just wanted to know how much land and the description of the land. That way they could start to sell it, give it away, um, loan it, whatever they were gonna do with it, okay? Um, and the more they could do, the faster they could do it, the more money they could make. So just like normal uh, jobs that we go on now, the faster you do something, the less accurate it is. Well, that's kind of what was happening um, with public lands. I'm not saying it was all inaccurate. I'm just saying there was a, a huge push for quantity as opposed to quality. Um, the U.S. government over time learns, their, uh, learns through mistakes what does and does not work. And they come up um, over the years and they, they're continuously uh, modifying it. But they've come up with this system called the Public Land Survey System, PLSS. Um, and the mother, the mother ruler of this system is the U.S. government manual that I just mentioned, the Manual of Instruction for Land Surveying. Um, it's called the BLM Manual is a common term for it. So you had the original 13 colonies. They were meets and bounds. Um, Meets and bounds comes from the terms uh, measurements and boundaries, and it's just abbreviated meets and bounds. A lot of people think that meets is the uh, the distance or the the bearing, or the the distance and bounds is the bearing. That's not that's not true. Meets is measurements. It's both the bearing and the distance, and then bounds is what is that line adjoining or what is it abutting up to or what is it coincident with? So you have measurements and boundaries. So an example of meets and bounds would be um, north 15 degrees east 700 feet to the lands of John Smith, okay? Well, that bearing and distance was the meets and John Smith was the bounds, okay? And it's important to know that bounds, um, let me grab a pencil. Bounds is really the important part of this, okay? If y'all go back to my screen where I'm drawing, so you have this property, okay? And you have land up here, that's owned by Snoopy, okay? And this is owned by Dave. So I'm gonna start this point of beginning and I'm gonna go north 15 degrees east 700 feet to the lands of Snoopy, all right? Now, that north 15 degrees east 700 feet that is just the land surveyors or the person who measured this, that's their, that's their way of helping you get to the lands of Snoopy, okay? It has nothing to do with holding this boundary, okay? It's gonna help you, it's a good indicator, but when they call for the lands of Snoopy, that is your monument, okay? If, if the land of Snoopy is 706 feet away, well, then so be it. It's gonna be 106, um, 706 feet, all right? So what I'm getting at is when you call to a, um, a boundary, that is the monument. That, that land ownership is the monument, regardless of what that meat tells you the measurement, the bearing in the distance, okay? Um, of, if, you, if you just ho blindly hold that 700 feet, uh, you know, that's when you're gonna start getting gaps and gores, overlaps, going into other people's property and we can't have that, 
Okay, the intent was to go up to the land of Snoopy. So you're gonna have to determine Snoopy's line. Once you do that, then you're gonna um, find where your corner uh, lies, okay? Um, notice I said corner, not monument. All right, so meets and bounds, measurements and boundaries. And the original 13 colonies, that is essentially what, what was governing at, at that time prior to the public land survey system. Um, now, after the 13 colonies, when we started moving westward, um, once we developed this system, then it becomes a public land survey system. So what the US government said was, hey, we're not gonna mess up all these boundary lines that these settlers established 120 years ago, we're gonna let everyone keep their land as is, but moving forward, we're gonna follow this new method, okay? So they didn't, it wasn't retroactive. They didn't go and disturb all these lines that were already established. They, they, they let them lie where, where the records said that they lied, okay? Everyone was happy. They weren't gonna go messing anything up. Um, and then public lands is moving on. So one more thing before we get into it, um, they started these, so the US government was trying to figure out how, how to do this um, right after the Revolutionary War. And they chose an area right outside the, um, right outside the 13 colonies, which was um, the west line of Pennsylvania. So where Pennsylvania, Ohio, and West Virginia all meet, there's an area there called the Seven Ranges. And the US government surveyors would go out there and that's the land that they originally chopped up trying to establish the best method of this public land survey system. They tried several different techniques before they settled on the one that they all agreed with. Um, but again, they didn't go back and correct it. So there's an area where West Virginia, Ohio, and Pennsylvania all converge. It's called the Seven Ranges, and it's just the guinea pig area. It's just a chopping block of them trying to figure things out. Um, and uh, they settled on a system, and then from that point forward, they started moving westward with it. Um, but there is an area in Ohio that's pretty messed up. Um, I, I was telling. Trent, I did a pipeline through there and I was getting deeds and it was telling me stuff like um, along the south line of section one and the north line of section 12 or something like that. And or um, the north line of section, let's say 18. And I was like, well, that's impossible. 18 and one don't even touch, you know? Well, if you look at the records that was in the seven ranges and sure enough, they, they were numbering their sections north, uh, coming down, going south, up and down, as opposed to like this, like we know that it's supposed to be, okay? And I'll get into all that in a minute. But there are some weird deeds out there because they didn't go back and change anything or correct it after they have established the right way or the most efficient way, should I say. Again, they were looking for efficiency because they wanted to inventory that land fast. All right. Um, so we went over this. Meets as measurements. Boundaries is a boundary um, as a call for like a landowner. Um, again, uh, measurements is bearings and distances. Okay. Um, so this was a brief history that we went over, but basically we had the Revolutionary War. We became a country. By 19, uh, 1785, that's when we started the, the first rectangular system. Um, the first land that we divided up after Ohio was called the Northwest Ordinance. I'm um, sorry, the Northwest Territories, and that was an ordinance called the Northwest Ordinance established by the, by the first Congress. And um, they, it's funny, they called it the Northwest Territories, but it was really Michigan. And um, that, that area up there 
but that was the Northwest to us back then. You know, uh, when you think of Northwest, you think of Oregon and Washington, but back then Michigan was the Northwest, you know, um, and that was the, the lands that they were given away to those um, revolutionary soldiers was up in Michigan. Um, let me see the first um, BLM manual. Uh, I'm sorry, the BLM was established in 1946. Before that, prior to that, it was called the GLO, General Land Office. And you'll, you'll still find records for the GLO. Um, I know when I lived in Nevada, um, we had all the old rec. I worked for the Bureau of Land Management out in Nevada, and they had all the GLO um, books. And you could look up the original surveyor notes and stuff. It was really cool. It was all that black and white microfiche and um, stuff like that. Um, so this is a good uh, breakdown. This is all in my manual, too. This is a copy of, of, of the manual. Um, here I list out meets and bounds states and public land states. Um, notice, again, it's the original 13 colonies and Texas. And why, why didn't they include Texas? Well, Texas was its own country at the time that the U.S. government was moving out. They were their own nation fighting against Mexico. And later on, um, Texas reaches out to the U.S., which is, you know, the fledgling nation that's being created around Texas, and they ask for the U.S. assistance in fighting Mexico. The U.S. agrees to do so, um, and they end up winning. And But the agreement was Texas said it would give up its um, nationality and become a state. So after they um, defeated Mexico in the Mexican War, Texas then becomes a state of the United States. Um, Texas owed the US government a ton of money because of their effort in helping them. Well, again, Texas was land rich and money poor. So how were they supposed to pay off their debt with zero money? So the US government allowed Texas to maintain its own land and to keep its own land. They said, you can have your land. Once you sell it off, then you can start paying your, your debt back to us. That was a huge mistake because uh, no one knew about oil then. Um, if the U.S. government knew about oil, they wouldn't have made that deal. Um, it was a great deal for Texas, horrible deal for the U.S. Um, there is not one ounce, aside from uh, Big Bend National Park, there's not one ounce of federal land in the state of Texas. It is all owned by Texas, still to this day. And they get royalties off of all those oil rigs um, and land rigs. Um, so, um, so that's why Texas is technically not a meets and bounds, um, not a public land state. Now, it does quasi follow the public land system in certain areas, but it doesn't, um, it's not regulated. So you, you find yourself kind of in sectionalized land and then you go over a township or whatever, and it's something totally different. And that's okay there. They don't have to follow any, any Bureau of Land Management rules. They can do what they want and they have done what they want. Uh, one more thing about Texas. I don't know if y'all know this, but there's um, surveyors in Texas called LSLSs, Licensed State Land Surveyors. It's basically a step above um, a registered professional surveyor. I'm, I am an R RPLS in Texas. But they also um, have LSLSs, which is you have to take another exam. And what those surveyors are allowed to do, they're allowed to survey state, Texas state lands. So basically, it's like a sea feds of Texas is what it is. Um, last I checked, there was only like, I think, 60 or 70 LSs in the entire state. The exam is extremely difficult. Um, 
to take. I think the average a- average test taker attempts six or seven times before they they pass the test. It's a huge um, huge honor to become an LSLS. Um, the only thing is you have to live there. The second you move out of Texas, you lose your license. So I never wanted to get it because I didn't want to live there anymore, <laughs> basically. Uh, I do like Texas. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying I, I wanted to move on. Um, so you have all these public lands states here, which is basically all of the West except Texas. However, um, still, all these states, they might have some sort of system in place that the U.S. government tried to take into account when they were dividing those states up, okay? Some really good examples of that is, uh, I like to use the Oregon Donation Land Claims, um, DLCs. So what those were, were the U.S. government went out and they, um, I'm sorry, uh, settlers were going out the Oregon Trail to go trap beaver out in Oregon and Washington, okay? Oregon and Washington were not states at the time, they were just um, territory. Uh, and the U.S. government wanted ocu- oh, wanted to occupy it, so they were giving away land out there. They were called donation land claims. And people were going and obtaining their land and starting to live out there. Well, then the public land survey system catches up, and it starts to divide up Oregon and Washington and Idaho. Well, now they have these big blocks of land that were already given away through the donation land claims. So now the public land surveyors, they had to divide the land up around these donation land claims and incorporate them into their survey system. So it's kind of a mess. You know, you have this system that's already in place and now they're trying to overlay township ranges and sections on top of it. So, um, but again, they didn't want to start taking people's land to correct anything. They just wanted to move along, right? Um, so that's a good example of something. Uh, Louisiana has a bunch of French arpents. Um, you, uh, New Mexico has a lot of Spanish grants. California's got the um, ranchos. Hawaii, um, you know, you had a lot of they, the native king and the native uh, people there. They had um, their own land survey uh, divisions. Florida has Spanish um, stuff going on. So a lot of these states have stuff that was already in place that we had to survey around, okay? I tried to list as many as I could here. Um, All right, so that's the division between meets and bounds and public lands. Um, Here's a map showing yellow is meets and bounds, white is public land, okay? Notice Kentucky and Tennessee are part of meets and bounds. That's one I always kind of forget about. I always assume that they weren't, but uh, they are. And you can just look at a map of the U.S. and kind of tell, you know, there, there, there's no straight lines in these states right here, except for this latitude here, right? Um, oh no, Pennsylvania's got some too, but for the most part, we're not following latitudes, we're not following longitudes, we're following mountain ranges, rivers, stuff like that, okay? Now, when you get out west, it's big blocks, right? So, you can kind of tell what's going on just by looking at things, okay? You got the Mississippi River that kind of throws things around, but other than that, it's pretty square. Got the sawtooths here. All right. Um, I'm not gonna go over all these, but these are um, methods of, I'm sorry, units of measurement. Um, Public lands, the, the entire premise a public land breakdown is based on the mile, 5,280 feet, okay? Um, They wanted to come up with a division of the mile 
that was manageable and as long as they could get, okay? If they could have made a chain that the surveyors could easily carry, that was 5,280 feet, they would have done it, okay? But a chain 5,280 feet in length would be way too cumbersome and heavy to, to travel through the woods with, right? So they had to come up with a division of the, of the mile that was a manageable length, that was not too cumbersome, and they came up with a chain, all right? A chain is 66 feet. Um, that is the length of a chain. Then they, you can further divide a chain up into rods. There are four rods for every chain. And a rod is 16.5 feet. So you have your chain and the chain's broken up into four even chunks. And those are called rods. The whole thing is called a chain. And chain is 66 feet, a rod is 16.5 feet. So 16.5 times four is 66. Now, 80 chains end over end. You were to take that chain and move it end over end 80 times, you're gonna get your mile. So for the surveyors to traverse a mile, they had to flip that chain 80 times, okay? Now the chain is, literally a chain. Um, and this is what it looks like right here. It has these links, little tiny metal links with a loop, and then the next, and then the next, okay? Um, it has 100 links. So they could even further divide up um, their measurement by links. They could have said, 70 chains and 15 lengths, okay? And they knew how much, how long a length, a length was as well. It'll be one hundredth of 66 feet. Um, so again, the whole basis of measurement in the public land survey system is based on that 5,280 feet. They came up with chains, which are 80 feet long in length, you can divide them up into four to make your rods were 16.5 feet. Um, and then they were let loose. Um, so you can go over these measurements. I highly recommend being able to quickly um, convert feet to chains and feet to rods and all that stuff. It's pretty simple calculations, but don't get tripped up on that during the exam um, because they're going to give you lengths in chains. They, they might tell you, you know, a square piece of land that's 80 chains, 79 chains, 82 chains, and 78 chains. Um, and, you know, you might have to find the area or something of it. Just be able to convert those chains back to feet quickly and efficiently, and then maybe even back into chains once you once you get your answer, okay? You can work in chains if you keep everything in chains, but if, they, if you start mixing and matching, that's when you're gonna get in trouble. All right, um, so now let's go into the actual system. We kind of learned the history, the basis of measurement, what's meets and bounds, what's public lands, um, let's go into the actual system. And when I talk about the system, I like to move from really big down into small. So we're gonna get the huge overall regional picture and we're gonna move our way into it, okay? So the first thing that was established was something called the initial point, okay? Now that initial point, um, is where your baseline and your principal meridian intersect, all right? Um, let's see. So your, pay, your baseline is going to move east and west, and your principal meridian is gonna move north and south. 
where those two lines intersect, that is your initial point. Okay. Um, now they have several initial points. Let me see if I can find it. Um, there's that famous map. Give me one second. That famous colorized map. I know you have all seen it. This thing right here. Okay. Um, every every different colored area is going to have a different initial point. You're going to have your principal meridian and your baseline in this yellow area different from this green area, which is different from this blue area, different from this green area. So every different colored area, look at Alaska. Alaska has one, two, three, four, five of its own, okay? Maybe it's uh, Aleutian Islands or its own thing. I don't know. Um, Colorado has three. It's got its uh, New Mexico, Ute, and sixth principal meridian. Um, Mississippi's pretty messed up too. I didn't. I never realized that. And then look at Ohio. This is the seven range area right here, this little yellow. And uh, that's, that's where they were all chopping everything up. Um, Michigan got it, has its own. Uh, Minnesota and Wisconsin share one. So every area has got a different one. And the reason they did this was probably for two reasons. One, um, they were they weren't surveying one area at a time. They may have sent surveyors out to this area and this area at the same time. Well, they didn't want to use the same method because they weren't a step. They didn't know theirs and they didn't know theirs, right? So they maybe that was one reason. Another reason is um, if you use one for the entire country, what if it was at uh, you had errors in it? Or it's kind of like um, like UTM zones. You don't want to stretch out uh, one zone across the entire United States. You want to have different zones. It's kind of like a, a clean slate. Um, so they had different initial points throughout the United States. Okay. Um, let's get into this again. So. They would go out, the first thing they would do was establish their principal meridian, a due north-south line, and a baseline, a due east-west line. They intersect at an initial point. That initial point, everything, as you move out from that, you're going to increase in number. So I'm going to incre increase going out, going down, going e uh, west, and going north. Okay. Um, we'll see later, but this will be Township 1, um, South, and 1 East. Township 1 South, Township um, 1, oh, I'm sorry, Range 1 East. Same thing up here. You're going to have Township 1 North and Range 1 East. And then when I go to this Township, it's going to be Township 1 North because I went one north above that principal, that uh, baseline, and two, my range is going to be two east, because I went over two, okay? Um, so just remember, as you extend from your initial point, numbers increase for township ranges. And we'll get to that. All right, so first thing they did was principal meridian baseline. That was step one. Step two was something that they called guidelines and standard parallels. So off of that principal meridian, 
they would offset 24 miles and create another line. So this is your principal meridian. And then 24 miles away from it, you got your first guideline, uh, guide meridian or guideline, okay? And that'll be east. And then 24 miles, you're gonna have your second guide meridian east. Going this way, you're gonna have your first guide meridian west, 24 miles, second guide meridian west, so forth and so on, 24 miles. And the intent was is to have these lines all parallel with the principal meridian, okay? They also did something else. Off of this baseline, they went 24 miles south and 24 miles north and created another parallel line. With the baseline 24 mile intervals, and they would call these standard parallel lines. So this would be the first standard parallel south. This would be the first standard parallel north. And then second north, third north, second south third south, okay? And all these lines are parallel with the base, with your baseline, okay? So guide meridians parallel with the prime uh, principal meridian, standard parallels are parallel with your baseline and everything is 24 miles offset, okay? So now you have, you're gonna create this grid system. And in that grid, you're gonna get a square that is 24 miles north and south and 24 miles east and west. This square is called a quadrangle, okay? So, now we're getting a little bit smaller. First, we have the big principal meridian baseline. We're gonna have our standard parallels and our guide meridians, and they're gonna create a grid system. That grid system is gonna default by creating a quadrangle. And there's gonna be quadrangles all over the place. And they're all gonna be 24 miles square, hypothetically, okay? We're gonna to come to the reason why they chose 24 miles later on. But um, for now, just know that it's 24 mile grid system that has been created, okay? Does anyone have any questions up to this point? I do see a chat room here. Uh, uh, just kind of following along on your power. I dropped your PowerPoint presentation in there. I dropped the okay. Gail Emanuel in the Dropbox for this week's okay. presentation. So. Yeah, all that's in there. So uh, no questions at the moment, though. Anybody can, uh, if anybody's got anything, you can unmute real quick and try. Okay. All right, so we're getting smaller and smaller here, right? Right now we're still pretty big with the quadrant, all right? Um, okay, leave my notes here, all right. Is a, is a quadrant angle map, is that where they, came up with the term a quad map, the old quad topo maps? Um, I don't, what is, uh, Trent, what is the size of a quad map? Uh, typically it, what, seven and a half minutes, right? So. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't, I don't know what that converts to. I know, that's a good question. It. Yeah, <laughs> um, I would bet there's some sort of a correlation, whoever asked that question. That's a real good question. I want to answer that myself. I'm make, take a note of that. Quadrangle versus quad map. Leave it up to Will Wing to ask that question. 
Yeah. <laughs> um, Sorry, it got my attention. I, was like, I know, I, I love it. it. I wonder if that's it. Yeah, I I, it. Um, <laughs> it's funny you say, I, I, thought of, I thought of that same question in the past and I never went and looked, I forgot about it, never went and looked it up. Um, but I, I, the, the answer is going to lie in how many miles is 7.5 um, minutes, you know? So I'll have to do the math on that, and um, maybe I'll tell Trent to send out the answer to that. But that, if anyone else finds out, let me know too. All right, so we're going to go into this quadrangle now, okay? That quadrangle, we've zoomed in, and this is your quadrangle, all right? Um, so this line is going to be a standard... Um, so guide meridian, this is going to be a guide meridian. I don't care which one, but it's going to be. And then you're going to have your standard parallel line. So this is going to be 24 miles by 24 miles square. Again, hypothetical. Um, and the intent was to have these two lines parallel with your principal meridian. And these two lines should be parallel with your baseline. Now, the reason they call it a quadrangle is because this quadrangle is going to create a four by four grid. Quad four, you have four by four, okay? Now what the hell are these, these squares? These are going to be six mile by six mile squares. And we're going to call them townships. So a quadrangle, 24 by 24 miles, is going to be made up of 16 townships. Four townships long by four townships wide. And a township is going to be six miles by six miles. Now, the surveyors finally are within their own system now. Okay. Um, so maybe they're the ones that establish these meridians and parallels, maybe not. But whatever happens in this quadrangle is going to be limited to and not extend out of this quadrangle. So what they're going to do is they're going to go into this quadrangle, treat it just on its own little grid system. Before now, we've been basing everything and everything's parallel. Well, we're still going to try and do that. But all our errors are going to be um, reduced to the limits of this quadrangle, okay? If they completely mess this quadrangle up, they still have a shot at getting something right for all these quadrangles, okay? Um, so what they would do in this system these lines are already established. You have your perimeter already done because that was step two. Step one was the initial point creation. Step two were the parallels and meridians. Now step three is going to be dividing up your quadrangle. So you have your perimeter already established when they got to this point. Now they're going to go in and they're going to establish these internal lines. The way they do that is they measure six over and six down, they're gonna create this six by six square. Let me see, I have a picture coming up. Okay, the way they did this was the first part, the first line that they established was this line right here. This was line one. So they would start right here at the very southwest corner of their quadrangle, they would measure over six miles, create a point, go up six miles, create a point, go over six miles. Hopefully, they would hit their line that was already established. Maybe they did, maybe they didn't. If they didn't, they would extend it or they would trim it to make it hit this line. Again, all your error is not going to escape this quadrangle. So start here, go over six, along that established line, 
Now they're going into virgin territory. They would go up cardinal north, which should be parallel to the standard parallels. Six miles, create an, a point, and then go over, trim, or extend back out to this previously established line. Now you have your first sec, your first township. Okay. Then, so this was line one, this was line two. By default, line two becomes line three because to create this square, they're going to do that same line. So three, and then they go up four, and then over five. Back out, trim, or extend. Six, seven, eight, trim, or extend. Nine, 10, 11. Oh, wait, sorry. They don't need to do, they would have to do this, but they don't need to establish this line because it's already done, and they don't need to establish that line. So they would go back to create nine and then up to create 10. Then they would come back down to this. Okay, and they would start where they established this one. They would do 12. Oh, wait, they would come over. Oh, sorry, they would start right here, go 11. To this point, they know that's, they already have this one done. Then they would come up and do 11. And then 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. 20, and then they would come back down. So if you follow the pattern, they're establishing townships like this. Okay. Um, eh, it's really like that, like that, and like that. They would just create a column start over a column, start over a column, start over a column, okay? So they move from the southwest toward the northeast, okay? Which is going to be the opposite from a, um, the sections that we get to next, okay? But so when you're creating townships, you move from southwest to northeast. You create a column, start over, move, move east, go north, move east, go north, move east, go north. Okay. Um, this is all outlined in the BLM manual. This is um, the order of operations for creating townships. Now, I mentioned earlier why why townships. I mean, why 24 miles? Um, you're going to have, you're going to be creating a flat grid system on Earth, right? So here's the North Pole. Here's the equator. Your lines of longitude are coming in, and they're all converging up to the North Pole. So if you're surveying in South Florida, public lands in South Florida, the distance between lines of longitude are a lot further than if you're um, surveying in Prudhoe Bay, Alaska, where they are really close, right? So you have that long stretch and you have this short stretch, Florida, Alaska. Um, but you don't have to be that extreme from Florida to Alaska. It happens every, it, it's happening every foot. But they made the agreement or they came up with the consensus that they were going to, um, they were going to correct for this convergence angle every 24 miles. They were gonna start over every 24 miles, all right? Um, so what would that look like? So let's see, here's our square quadrangle system, but you have your line of longitude really doing something like this. So
So your lines of guide meridians, they technically are not straight up and down lines. They are parallel with the principal meridian. However, if you were to zoom in, they really would be kind of like a stared, a step kind of system. Because after this 24 miles, when they would measure out this 24 miles, they would come up and they would start another 24 miles. They would measure again. And when you do that, it's going to be longer than it was down here because the lines of longitude are converging. So it's going to be a stared step system. And this is where you get your closing corners and your standard corners. So on your quadrangle, here's your quadrangle again, your 24 by 24. This line up here is all the corners of these sections and townships are going to have closing corners on the south side of this principal meridian. South side, you're going to have your closing corners. But north, the same line north of it, you're going to have your standard corners. So you're going to have a corner for this township that's here. Here's your standard parallel. But you're going to have a corner that might be here for this township. And that both of these corners are valid. This is your closing corner. This is your standard corner. So north of the, prim, the parallel, north of it is going to be standard corners. South of that parallel are going to be closing corners. We can get into closing corners um, another talk. Um, but you need to know that they chose 24 miles in order to correct for that convergence angle. And they restarted and recalibrated every 24 miles. Now think about it, 24 miles is every four townships. So if you have a township, now you're not gonna have closing corners in all these township lines. Township, let's say this was the initial point. This would be township one north, one east. This would be two north, one east. Three north, one east. Four north, one east. So when you see a, a township that has a number that is a multiple of four, you need to be aware of closing corners. You don't have to worry about closing corners on a township of one, two, three, 13, uh, seven, 26, but if you have a township that is a multiple of four, four, eight, 12, 24, 40, that's when you need to start worrying about um, sec, um, standard corner and closing corner, all right? So let's go back to, you have your quadrangle, you got your sec, your, township divisions. So now we have this township. It's called a township. It's a six mile by six mile square. So now let's zoom further into that one. All right. So here's your township now. Now, just like a quadrangle, you have this township up here and you have townships surrounding everywhere. And we know how to number these townships. They're going to, as you extend out from the initial point, you're going to increase number value. Now, this township is six mile by six mile square. The outside perimeter lines are already established during step three, which was the township establishment, okay? Which was a division of the quadrangle. So again, we go baseline, principal meridian, 
Then you get your parallels and guide meridians. Then you get your quadrangles. Then you got your townships. And now we're finally in the township. So we're getting smaller. Now a township is six miles by six miles. And what they did in here was they divided this thing up into one mile squares, which will be six miles, um, six lines by six lines. Yeah, okay. Um, and they numbered it. Why they did it this way, I don't really know. But they numbered it in a snaking fashion from one to six. And then they come down seven to 12. And they keep going in a snaking order all the way to 36. OK? Um, now, that's how they numbered it, but that's not how they ran the lines. They ran the lines like this. Remember, in the, in the quadrangle to create townships, they move from the southeast, southwest to the northeast. Well, in a township, they go from the southeast to the northwest. The opposite. And they, it's the same kind of pattern. Again, you have your perimeter already established. They, they did not have to worry about redoing that. That was established weeks, months, years prior to them getting there, okay? All they were tasked with at this point in time was to create these 36 sections, one mile by one mile sections inside this six mile by six mile square, all right? So what they would do, let's take this section right here, section 36, the very first one they would do. All right, so this line and this line are already there. This point is already there. They would start at that point. They would go over six, I'm um, sorry, one mile to create this point. Then they would go up one mile parallel with this line, which should be parallel with a um, standard parallel or a guide meridian. And that, that line should be, parallel. that guide meridian should have been parallel with the principal meridian. So everything is cardinal north and cardinal south, cardinal east and cardinal west, okay? So they go over one mile along that line that's already there, measuring their chain, 80 flips to get your mile, 5280. Get this point, go up north one mile, put a temporary pin in the ground or stake. Then they would go one mile due east until they hit this line that's already established, the perimeter of the township. They would either be too long or too short. They would Calculate that error that they were off. Let's say they were too short, 100 feet. So they did their 80 flips due east, and they got to a point, they're like, damn, we're still 100 feet away from that line. They weren't going straight. Something was in their way. Who knows? So they, they know that they're short 100 feet. So they know they need to move this stake. The stake they put temporarily, they need, they need to move that 100 feet to the east to make it all work out. So then they would go out to there, they would extend their line, they go out to their, their uh, established line, and then they would do another run back. And they would find that sure enough, they were short 100 feet. They would pull that stake and set this one permanently. And then now they have their lines. OK. That first run they did was called the what do they call that the um, random. So they do a random line and then they do a true line. So they true it up because now they know what they're off. OK. And now they got 36 section 36 established. 
Why they do the last one first, I don't know. Then they go up, they're going to move on to section 25. So they, they have this line is set, this line is set. They're going to start that, that point that they corrected. They're going to go due north one mile, put a temporary stake, go due east one mile until they hit their line, figure out their error, come back on their true line and correct it, put the pin in. Now they're done. And they're going to keep moving up the line. Okay. So they're going to go up that first column. They're going to move over west and they're going to go up. West, up, west, up, west, up. When they get to section one up here, as they're moving up those six miles and they get all the way up to section one, let's zoom into section one now. So here's your township perimeter. Okay, you have section 13, 12, now they get to one. They're gonna put this point in, fake, um, temporary, they're gonna go over, true it up, come back, put it back in where it should be. Then they're gonna go and they're gonna do another mile north. Well, this line should already be in from section from step three. When they get to this point, they're going to go up. They're going to be long or short. OK, the most chances are they aren't going to hit it after traversing six miles through virgin land. They aren't going to hit this line perfect. They're going to be either too long or too short. The rule says whatever they are, it is OK. It's supposed to be one mile. Let's say it's one and a half miles. They were really, really, really too low on this one. Okay. That could be a reason their mistakes moving up. It could be because when they established this line, it was wrong. But whatever it is, it is. So they have this one and a half miles here. They aren't going to go back and correct every single thing. They're going to go back and correct two weeks worth of traversing. They're going to keep that error. And they're just going to make section one, instead of being one mile by one mile, now it's going to be one mile by one and a half miles. All that error is going to be pushed up into the north part of section one. Okay. Um, what part of section one is it pushed up into? They create the midpoint line. They're going to keep the south half of one like it should be, one half mile. Then they're going to go up another quarter of a mile. And they're going to keep that like it should be. So the bottom three quarters of a mile of section one is normal. Okay. All that extra error, that extra half mile, is going to be pushed into the north one quarter of section one. It could be short. They could have measured, you know, um, 5,000 feet. They could be short 280. Well, they're going to go halfway up. They're going to keep that south half normal. If they can keep the next quarter mile normal, they'll do that. And then whatever short is going to be pushed into the last quarter mile. So the last quarter mile of section one, section two, section three, four, five, and six, the northern one quarter of a mile is going to be slop. It's either going to be efficient, um, excess, or deficiency. All right. Now the same thing happens with sections. Um, that column on the west end, section 6, 7, 18, 19, 30, and 31. All that error that they did moving westward is going to be pushed into the west quarter mile of that column. So all your error in a township is going to be pushed north and west. That's why you always hear about section six breakdown as being difficult because section six is going to be the northwest corner 
of a township, and it's going to have all the error from moving north, and it's going to have all the error from moving west. So section six, technically, the west quarter mile and the northernmost quarter mile are going to be where all the error is pushed. So section six has the potential to be a real difficult section because it's got north error and west error all pushed in it. The other sections, sections five, four, three, two, one, and seven, 18, 19, 30, and 31, those are just gonna have some error, either west, west error or north error, but six has both because it's the northwesternmost section, all right? Um, so that is, that's how you create down to the section. And then you can go further. Uh, this is my, um, my, if you're looking at my uh, PowerPoint, this is the screen that shows um, how all the error is pushed into that last quarter mile west and quarter mile north of that township, okay? Uh, and that's where you're going to get your government lots. That's where the government lots are going to occur. And then you can further break down a section into quarter sections and um, half sections, quarter quarter sections, sixteenths, and all that. Okay, um, that is simply just dividing up a section. Now, there's different ways to divide that's um i'm doing another talk i think my next talk trend if i'm not mistaken is on um single double proportioning yes sir and yep august and, yep and that is um that is how you do this division up within a section and i'll go over that with you um it's outside of section two but um i'll go over all that with y'all on that on that lesson Okay. Um, and how to really read chains and all that. Um, as a good brief, this is uh, a good starting point. This is your section, and this tells you how how you're going to be dividing it. Okay. But again, we can go over that next in August. Um, also on this slide, this um, I'm trying to explain closing corners here. So if you want to go over um i actually i can go over this next in august as well but this explains the convergence angle of lines of longitude and how you have standard corners north of a parallel and stand and closing corners south of a parallel um and both corners can be valid at the same time with that gap in them and there most likely will be a gap because the whole point is to correct for convergence right um, the big thing, big takeaway with those are multiples of four. So townships that are have a multiple of four, you need to watch out. That's when they're that's when closing corners become um, valid. Okay. If you're not on a multiple of four township, you do not have to worry about them, generally speaking. All right. Um so here's our overall breakdown. You got your initial point, step one, which is creation of principal meridian and a baseline. Then you're going to have your step two will be guide meridians and parallels. By default, you're going to create this huge grid system that creates quadrangles. Quadrangles are further divided up into townships, four by four. Then once you have your township established, you go further in and start dividing it up into sections. Um, and quadrangle, you break up into townships from southwest to northeast. Sections within a township, you break up into sections by moving from southeast to northwest. So it's the opposite. Um, if you're looking for rationale, this is not the place to go. I don't know why they numbered them the way they did. I don't know why they switched 
um, township establishment with section establishment, but that's how they did it, okay? Um, do you have any questions with anything? Everybody's pretty quiet. Uh, while while you were uh, chatting, Tom Tom looked up uh, the seven and a half minutes of longitude and seven and a half minutes of long latitude. Uh, yeah, it's approximately eight miles north to south and six miles east to west. But okay. essentially, it was it was produced by the map uh, maps being one to twenty four thousand. So yeah, okay. And then um, uh, and then Alaska because it's so big, uh, their quadrangle maps pretty much cover fifteen minutes. <laughs> Oh, wow. Of, of yeah. latitude and, and uh, 20 to 36 minutes of longitude. So, yeah, there, there's still chunks of land up in Alaska that have not been divided yet. Yeah, exactly. That'd be amazing to go do one. Yeah, no uh, you'd probably get eaten alive by black flies and grizzly bear, but <laughs> it'd be fun. That's good stuff. Um, anybody well, yeah, got anything? Thanks, I was going to say, anybody got anything? Uh, any questions you want to ask? Nobody. All right. Well, there you go. Uh, okay. Let's see somebody in the chat. Oh, Adam says good. Wow, well, great presentation. So good stuff. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. Thanks. Um, I don't see everyone in this um list. I don't see all the participants. But if anyone's uh, purchased my manual, I, I really appreciate the support and spread the word. Absolutely. Um, I hope it's useful. I'm getting good reviews still. So. Yeah, it's good stuff. I love it. And the good reviews on the uh, WestFed video stuff as well, so it's it's working out great. Yeah, I I, I need to ask Christy. I like to read them, see yeah. all, all the good ones and bad ones. Right. <laughs> so yeah, exactly, <laughs> always. Um, well, I uh, hope everybody has a good week. And uh, Wisdom Wednesdays is on Wednesday for those that uh, want to chat some more about that. And uh, okay. otherwise, we'll see you back next Monday. All right, great. Thanks Appreciate everybody. It. And um, Thanks, yeah, Dan. if y'all have any questions, please reach out. Love it. Thank you, sir. Thank you all. Bye, guys.